Good evening and welcome back to our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. It's good to see you all on the other end of that lens. Returning after more than a year, we welcome the Barbara Martin Trio. good to be back here at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts and especially to be back with Lucy Kilpatrick on the piano and Bob Bowen on the bass. Going to do uh, a Duke Ellington song. When I walk down the street, seems everyone I meet gives me a friendly hello. I guess I'm just a lucky so so. The 
the birds in every tree they sing so merrily they sing wherever I go I guess I'm just a lucky so and so if you should ask me the amount of my bank account I must confess that I'm slipping about that don't bother me confidentially I got a dream that's a pippin and when my day is through each night I hurry to a love that's faithful I know I guess I'm just a lucky so and so one a couple of years old I recorded it with these two lovely musicians I don't know what last year sometime I think it's a song about um, when you're just starting to get to know somebody and you're feeling like yeah you know I really think this could work but there's that period of like hmm I think it's gonna happen well Maybe not. Well, you know, no, no, I think it might happen. Um, so yeah. it's that, that stage of the romance. You're a planet turning in outer space. If I wait patiently, I'll see. Your beautiful face Don't know why I can't be so sure Your gravity is Pulling me closer Been watching You make your way Across the sky Predicting our orbits are 
get here Seems like light years since I felt your steady beam But every night you grow brighter in my dreams writing um right after my divorce i was writing a lot of really sad songs it seems like i had a whole cd the proverbial uh divorce cd um and eventually my friends started saying you know we're ready for a happy song from you <laughs> um so one morning i woke up and i thought yep i'm ready i am ready to do something different here i'm ready to move on with my life um, and so this song, this song, it came to me that I was really ready for love. Sorted through those dusty old heartaches. Now there's no regrets to get rid of. Packed up every memory that I hold on. dress still fits like a glove there's a sparkle in my eye i'm feeling mighty spry i'm ready for love been too long romance please appear i am your song whispering in my gear so i'm shining of someone declaring to the heavens above just in case you didn't know I'm really ready to go I'm ready for love
Now there's no regrets to get rid of Packed up every memory that had a hold on me I'm ready for love And I pulled out all my clothes from the closet My favorite dress, it still fits like a glove There's a sparkle in my eye, I'm feeling about as bright appear I miss your song whispering in my ear so I'm shining up my smile for some someone declaring to the heavens above just in case you didn't know I mean they're ready to go I'm ready for So now from a happy song to a sad song. It's another one that I wrote. Actually, um, it uh, got recorded by a blues singer in Nashville, and she's just coming out with her CD, and it's going to be the title cut. Um, I wrote this song when I was going through a really big depression and having a hard time getting out of it. Um, and so for me, a lot of times, songwriting is therapy. So writing this song was, was therapy for me. shone through my window for days dark cloud passed over decided to stay it's coming down hard and I'm watching it pour I'm stuck in the middle of a Some dishes piled in the sink. Mail eyes unopened. I just sit here and think. Try to get up. Then I wonder what for. Cause I'm stuck in the middle. skies to say but from where I sit all I see is rain 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 and all that I told you to leave me alone but now all I want is for you to come home the water keeps rising and I'm sinking down slow. I'm stuck in the middle of a
will be clear skies today But from where I sit All I see is Rain, 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 rain Sun hasn't shone through My window for days Dark cloud passed over Decided to stay It's coming down hard And I'm watching it pour I'm stuck in the middle Of a blue I'm stuck in the middle I'm stuck in the middle of a blue storm Okay so we're going to end this set with a um, Harold Arlen and Johnny Mercer song. Harold Arlen is, he's just one of my very favorite composers. He wrote Stormy Weather. He wrote the music for um, Over the Rainbow and many other really wonderful songs. And so the combination of him with Johnny Mercer, who is just um, one of the best lyricists alive. Um, I really like this song. It's, um, I think it's an especially nice song for, for right now with what we've been going through. It's called My Shining Hour. This will be my shining hour Calm and happy and bright In my dreams your face will flower Through the darkness of the night Like the lights for me, or an angel watching over me, this will be my shining hour till I'm with you again.
Barbara Martin Trio. I gotta tell you, Barbara, every time you come, you make my day brighter. Today, to today this evening has been no exception. I can't wait to relive this night as often as I can. I think it's time for a break and a conversation. Would you join me in the, the chat room? I would be very happy to. All right, right over here. Hey, Barbara, thank you for that first set of music. Oh, it was, it's always a pleasure performing here. Mm -hmm. um, just the professionalism. Oh. The sound is just always just stellar, which is wonderful for a musician, we don't always get that. Mm. Um, and you as a host and oh. the two gentlemen doing the excellent job with the cameras. Um, it's just such a treat for a musician. A lot of times I'm bringing my own sound. If, if I wanna have a video, I gotta get out my phone and figure <laughs> out how to do all that. And um, so this is just such a treat to be here in this beautiful space. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a joy to be able to provide it for people like you. We've, we've been doing it in, for nearly two years now, I think. And it's just, I, I, if I'm honest with you, I'm amazed people are still looking at me, but, <laughs> but they're still watching and we're thankful for I'm all of amazed. you. Uh, we've already asked you in your first interview to tell us something about yourself in your own words. We've gotten to know you a little bit, but since, since we've met together last, what has changed? What's new with Barbara? Oh my gosh, let's see. Well, um, I sold my house, oh. I moved into an apartment for three months, and then I bought another house, <laughs> and I moved again. <laughs> so, that's been a part of, of, of what I've been doing. I'm very happy in the house that I'm in. Um, I hiked some more of the Appalachian Trail. I have now hiked 1,800 miles of the Appalachian Trail, oh and I've goodness. got 375 miles left. Oh my goodness. Is that a goal of yours to hike the whole thing? Yes, it is a goal of mine. I, I chip away at it every year. It sounds um, like you're going to make it real soon. Um, well, the parts that I have left are the really difficult parts um, in New Hampshire and Maine. Very climbing over, <laughs> <laughs> climbing over huge rocks and things like that. Um, but um, I just keep at it because it's really fun. I love. Um, I love the culture on the trail. There's just, you just meet people and there's, uh, there's just a whole feeling on the trail of being on the trail that's just really, uh, that's really wonderful. You know, nature tells so many different stories. In so many places you visit it. We just had an exhibition on Ansel Adams, Compositions in Nature it was called. <sighs> and it, we had a concert that went with it. We're not here to talk about Ansel. My point I'm getting to is you are such a great storyteller. And uh, listening to the way you write your music and to the words and to the structure of the melody, mm -hmm. I'm always drawn in to the stories you're telling. And it's, it's my belief that a great teller of stories must also be a great consumer of stories. And so I wonder what sorts of things do you read, do you listen to that influence and impact the way you compose your stories? Well, it's interesting. I think this may be true for a lot of musicians. I don't really listen to a lot of music, oddly enough. I'm the same. And I always thought that was odd until I started talking to other musicians and they said no. Um, I think for me, I'm always taking apart music when I'm listening to it. Exactly why I don't and listen. It's, it's so relaxing. it's not relaxing. <laughs> Although I do, I'd like, I really like listening to um, old jazz, old vocal jazz. I really love listening to that. Um, what do I read? Well, right now I'm reading this book called 1491, and it's about, it's just fascinating. It's about the Native Americans in the Americas before 1491, and I'm just learning so much. Originally, people just thought that the Native Americans in, well, except for the known cultures, the Incas and the Aztecs and the Mayans, that, um, that they were just hunter-gatherer tribes and there weren't very many of them. And now they're discovering that in our country, there's, there's these, there were these cities, these civilizations mm -hmm. of Native Americans. So I'm reading that. Um, 
what else do I read? And then I read detective stories. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I try to go back and forth. I'll read something like 1491 that's very educational, and or I read something philosophical, and then you know, I, then I just read a really good detective story. Uh -huh. um, I really like Louise Penny. She's she writes really great detective stories. Um, so I don't know where do I get my inspiration for my songs. A lot of it's just from talking to people and listening to people. A lot of times my songs are kind of, a, they're about me, but they're not totally autobiographical. Okay. Um, I mix in a lot of talking to friends and what they're going through. Um, well, musically, I guess, I'm thinking of that song that I sang, Since, Since You've Been Here. Oh, I love that. Um, I really love, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot her name. <sighs> um, why can't I think of a piano player, jazz? Oh, oh, anyway, um, I really like her style, even though I can't remember her name right now. <laughs> um, but I was taking guitar lessons from this guy in Harrisonburg, Bob Driver, and he showed me, he showed me a way of doing chords Nora Jones, ha! You know, I almost ha! guessed that. And I said, I don't, that can't be it. <laughs> Nora Jones, I really like her songs. And then I took this guitar lesson from Bob Driver and he showed me this way to do leading chords. And so from learning that and thinking, gosh, you know, I'd like to do, I'd like to write something that's kind of like Nora Jones. Um, and then I had the idea of I was just dating someone after my divorce, and it really was kind of like that. Like, since you've been here, it's like, wow, I'm not getting anything read, you know, because <laughs> you're around, um, which is a good thing. So it's a bunch of different things. Um, musically, um, learning things from um, going to workshops, learning different chord progressions, learning different ways of playing. I know when I learned, when I played with Mac Walter, we played together for 16 years. Wow. He's an incredible guitar player. Um, and he just taught me so much about the guitar. Um, he taught me the jazz chords. And that just opened up. I think the first song I wrote after I learned the jazz chords was Blue Storm. Okay. And then I wrote Ready for Love. And that just opened up this whole huge world for me as far as it's like having a vocabulary right. right a musical vocabulary that i can express different feelings and different shades and different now i have this whole new thing and i have blues and i have jazz and and i also i don't i haven't played that here but i also write it's kind of acoustic folk type, almost a little edge, with, a, with an edge of country, too. Uh -huh. And so sometimes I just think, well, what do I want to express? You know, can I express that through finger-picking blues? Can I express it through jazz? Or maybe I, I express it with three chords, you know, mm -hmm. on my acoustic. Uh, I just like having that, that big vocabulary to use. I think that definitely comes through with your guitar playing and your songwriting. Um, certainly with your vocal style as well, the way you sing, where do you get those influences from? Well, when I first started getting into jazz, um, I, I took some vocal lessons from um, Stephanie Nikazian. Oh, we've had her on the show, yeah. Yeah, she is a wonderful, wonderful teacher and very extremely supportive. and. Um, she just said, you know, you just have to listen, 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 listen. So I had this Ella Fitzgerald CD all about jazz, and I think I'd listened to that like 100 times. Mm -hmm. I just played it over and over and over and over and over again. I also listened to a lot of Billie Holiday. Um, then I got into Carmen McRae. Oh, yes. Um, the, the album that she does where she sings Thelonious Monk. Mm -hmm. Incredible, incredible album. And then I started listening to Anita O'Day. Mm, yeah. um, Good taste. <laughs> and they all have, and I've, gosh, I try, I, I remember trying to sing like Billie Holiday and it's just impossible. Yeah. She's so 
completely unpredictable in what she does. With that itty bitty range, it's just, it's amazing. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's totally amazing. Cause you listen to her and you just, you think, oh yeah, I could do that. You know? <laughs> it, because it sounds so simple, but she is like, the way she plays with the beat and Finally, I just thought, well, I'm just going to borrow some things from her, but I'm never going to sound like her. So just kind of borrow a little. Oh, and Dinah Washington, too. Of course. I listened to Dinah Washington and learned a lot from the way she sings um, about singing the blues. The way she cuts, cuts off her words really gives, gives her singing that punch. Mm -hmm. um, you clearly think a lot about what these different women are doing and, and how to incorporate those techniques in the one you've developed for yourself. Oh, Ernestine Anderson, too. I have to mention her. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know her, but um, I got to see her at the Kennedy Center. She's just a wonderful singer. I don't know if she's still alive or not. I don't know Ernestine. I got to look that up. You need to look her up. She's incredible. And she's one of the few. Um, the reason I like her so much is that she sings jazz and blues mm. equally well. You know, a lot of people don't know that there's a difference between doing both of those things. You Big know, difference. It, a huge difference. I mean, to someone that might sound the same or sound similar, but no, it's, it's a whole different, different style. She's the only singer that I've ever heard that can sing both styles. Mm. Just beautifully. Really well, really authentically, really well. Write that name down before you leave. I'm, okay. I'm going to check that out tonight. So I don't know if I'm answering your question or not. I Absolutely. think I am. <laughs> what have you been working on lately? Is there anything new coming from, from your mind and from your pen? Well, I've written a few things. Um, I've recorded a couple of things. I recorded um, two songs with, in Charlottesville with Lucy and Bob. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I recorded Closer and I recorded um, a song that I didn't play tonight called Flying Free. Um, and I'm, I want to, I want to get, I have a lot of things that I want to record. It's just a matter of, of getting in the studio and waiting for the virus. Yes. <laughs> our friend, the virus, my brother, as my brother says, <laughs> waiting for our friend, the virus to decide what he, she is going to do. <laughs> Hope we figure out what to do with he or she. Right. With our friend. Right, right. Not that we're completely helpless with it, but. That's true. Um, what is your experience in the studio like? I enjoy recording, but I don't really enjoy being in the studio. I'm so glad when I'm finally done. But what's your experience like? Well, I know the first time I went in the studio, which was a really long time ago, 1991, um, and I learned so much mm -hmm. about my own performance mm -hmm. because it's like someone taking a photograph I mean you you hear ev you hear everything yeah. and I'd been playing in a lot of clubs and you know I wasn't really a lot of noisy clubs and I wasn't really hearing what I was doing and I really heard a lot of the problems that I had I heard that singing wise I'm I'm kind of like dropping off at the end of the phrase and um, and I heard that my rhythm was not quite right on the guitar and so I really learned every time I go in the studio I really learn a lot. Um, I would say I enjoy being in the studio. It's better now that when I used to go in the studio, um, Mac Walter, the gentleman I was talking about before, we played together for a long time and he had a recording studio and we that was really wonderful. We recorded two CDs in there and I recorded a couple of other CDs. Um, and since it was his studio, we didn't have that pressure of Oh, you know, we got to get it right. Yeah. You know, the clock is ticking and, we, and we're spending more money. So that was really fun making a couple of those CDs because we did not have that constraint. And we could be in the studio and we could experiment and we could do things differently and, and not have to worry about spending a lot more money. So that was really fun. I did learn, though, that the part after that, you know, the mixing, and the, that is very, very tedious. And I finally just said, OK, you just do that. And he was happy. He didn't really want me in there anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, just he just, he loved that. Just the really tedious, you know, 
this is not quite right and that note's not quite that right and all of that, I find that very tedious. Um, but the rest of it, um, the rest of it I do enjoy and, I, and I, always, I always learn something every time I go in the studio. What you're saying is absolutely right and all the reasons why, I can't say I don't like it, but I think it's fear and laziness with me. Hearing, <laughs> the first time I went into the studio I had the same experience you did, heard all the things I thought I was great at that I just am not. And I really, that was a, an, an ego punch, I think. And I haven't gotten over it. I'd learned. Definitely took the opportunity to learn, but man, it scares me every time I go in. I'd, I'd much rather in three minutes a song be over and no one noticed that one mistake. You can get so much better, though. I know this, well, I learned, I finally, fig it took me years. I mean, I've got nine CDs. I finally figured out what I wanted to do when I was singing and what worked. and. And what worked in a lot of ways, emotionally, you know, being relaxed and stretching and being relaxed and how far do I want to, how close do I want to be to the mic and all those kinds of things. And it just, I just kept learning and learning. But then the, my guitar was, that just took, it wasn't until the last CD that I put out, which was a solo CD, and I just decided, because before that I was always playing with these really great guitar players. <laughs> And, you know, and I would hear them and I would just think, well, I'm not going to play on this CD. Yeah. I'm not playing, you know. I, I'm just not going to sound as good as they are. And finally on the solo CD, the last one I put out, I decided I'm going to play. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm good enough. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. So then I started learning about, and that helps me in my performance. Right. When I hear it in the studio, ooh, that's really not working. You know, when I do that little slap there, or I do that little extra thing, eh, that doesn't really, that's not really working. Right. Um, and the only way you really hear that is, you know, to listen to yourself. But is it painful? Yes. <laughs> it, I want to get, I'm going I'm to get back to the studio. I, I'm determined. And I'm going to play next time. I usually shy away or get someone else to play, but I think I might. I think you should. Touch my fingers to the keys at least once. Yes. Why not? I encourage you. Well, I'm going to take that encouragement. Like you, I, I just bought a house, my first home. Oh, neat. And there's a, a really beautiful finished attic in this house, and I'm planning to turn that into my own studio so I can Wonderful. make my own mistakes and get my own projects done. There you go. That's the plan. That is a lesson for the studio is, you know, is, is to just like really just practice, practice, practice. And then when you go in, you know, you feel like you're ready and... Um, you know, not to pay the studio guy yeah. for rehearsing in the studio. <laughs> That's it. Again, it's expensive. Ooh, I love my job, but, you know, I got bills. Yeah. You know, yeah. And studio time is not something I can, I can do right now. But if I have my own. And invite some folks over to have, enjoy themselves up there, too. It'd be fun. I like to think about your um, writer's retreat that you talk about going on. And I think I might like to do something like that in my home. Maybe not a whole weekend, but a day or something, bring folks in and see what we can create. You, know, you can see you inspire me every time you come, Barbara. And tell just people, tell people leave their phones, you know, outside, mm -hmm. you know. It really does make a difference when there's just this big chunk of time devoted to only, I'm just going to write. I'm right. not going to have any other distractions or whatever you guys are going to do. Right. Um, and I'm not going to check my phone. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to answer phone calls. I'm just going to totally, you just get to a really completely different creative space mm -hmm. doing that. You know, there's something beautiful about days long by where great minds and great artists collected to talk and to create together. We're, we're running the Man Ray exhibition right now, and a small part of that is focuses on Gertrude Stein and her salon. And I think oh. I might like to do something similar to that. I'm no Gertrude, I'm no man. But it might be nice to have a space or create a space, a sanctuary for minds and, and artists like ourselves. I think that's, I want to be invited. Yes, ma'am, you want to? <laughs> I want in on that. <laughs> Wouldn't be telling you about it if you weren't that on the list. That sounds incredible. I think so. I, I'm just talking about myself, but that's what, I, that's what I, I hope to do. But that inspiration does come from you, Barbara. I, I mean that genuinely. And thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you. Well, I've enjoyed our chat together, uh, Me but too. it's time for set two if you're ready to give it to us. Absolutely. All I'd right. be delighted to. A little birdie told me that I'm okay it features on this day. <laughs> yes. Y'all better get I can't get away with playing here and not playing. Though. You can't, not anymore. <laughs> not with you here. <laughs> not, not since you introduced it to me. 
<laughs> well, if you if you'll if you'll play for us, Bob and, and Lucy are waiting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
I was talking about my divorce, so I got a divorce and um, I started living by myself and at first I hated it. And then after a while I started thinking, you know, I kind of like this. I like living by myself. I get everything my own way. I don't have to worry about um, somebody putting something down where I don't want it to be. Um, and then I started dating and I realized, oh, I've got to mm. learn all over again how to get along with people, how to share, you know, the things that you should have learned when you were in kindergarten. Um, so that's what this song is about. it's so cold outside I thought I would do a song that's about when it was very very hot and this is a song written by Nat King Cole and he wrote this song from an African folk tale that his grandmother told him his grandmother told him a lot of different African folk tales and his father was a preacher and sometimes his father would use these African folk tales as 
the themes of his sermon. So this particular one is about, this particular African folktale is about a monkey and a buzzard. And they're in the jungle, and it's very, 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 very hot. All the animals are very hot. And the buzzard is flying around high up in the air and thinking, you know, I see an opportunity here. So the buzzard comes down, and he approaches the first animal, a little mouse. He says, hey, you look really hot. How would you like to cool off? And the mouse said, yeah, that sounds really great. And the buzzard said, hop on my back. I'll take you for a ride. So they flew higher and higher and higher, and the mouse felt wonderful. The breeze was blowing against his fur. All of a sudden, the buzzer started bucking and going around and threw the mouse off. And the mouse landed on the ground, and he was dead, and the buzzer took advantage of that. So one by one, the buzzer did this with several of the animals, and all along, there was a monkey sitting up in a tree watching all of this. So eventually, the monkey hopped down, and the buzzard said, hey, monkey, you want to go for a ride and cool off? And the monkey said, sure, but the monkey had a plan. took the monkey for a ride in the air. The monkey thought that everything was on the square. The buzzer tried to throw the monkey off his back. The monkey grabs his neck and said, now listen, Jack. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Ain't no use in diving. What's the use in jiving? Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. The buzz told the monkey, you are choking me. Release your hold and I will set you free. The monkey looked the buzzard right dead in the eye and said, your story is touching, but it sounds like a lie. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top right dead in the eye and said your story's real touching but it sound just like a lie straighten up and fly right straighten up and stay right straighten up and fly right cool down papa don't you blow your top cool down papa don't you blow your top cool down papa don't you So here's a song that I wrote. Uh, this is one of Robert's favorites, he told me. Um, I wrote this song at, um, I'm a part of the Southwest Virginia Songwriters Association. And before the pandemic, my friend and co-writer, Greg Trefidlo, um, uh, would have this thing that he called the Writer Overnighter. It was a whole weekend that uh, 10 or 12 of, of us songwriters would get together and all we would do would just be write songs. And it was really wonderful. I've gotten a lot of great songs out of that writer overnighter. And this was one of them. Um, I couldn't figure out what to write, so I went for a walk. And I was worrying about something. I'm always worrying about something. My friends tell me that, you know, you're, you just worry a lot. 
And as I was walking, I thought, you know, really, right now, in this moment, on this beautiful day, walking in this beautiful area, everything is absolutely okay. And that's where I got the idea for the song. <laughs> dog to walk the past and the future they can't mess me up cause I've got so much today when life doesn't follow my wish it would be people aren't perfect especially me I could let myself worry or enjoy what I've got I'm okay do you do 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 This next one is um, got to have at least one sad song in in every in every set, and and so this will be the one. Um, this is on a, a CD that I recorded with a really great guitarist, Vince Lewis, um, and we did a CD of uh, guitar and my vocal, and I played guitar some, and we had bass on some of it, and I wrote some originals for it, and uh, and this is one of them. the dark I can feel your body move lie awake in the aftertaste of you sweet but bitter too there's a blue note bending low in an empty pillow when you go the scene unfolds in the With fire fascinates until it burns, and I wind up here again, counting up my shoot of bits along with the question mark in the dark.
off with a Billie Holiday song. Um, this was a big hit for her back in 1932, and she recorded this with the Teddy Wilson Orchestra. Um, we're just going to do it quite a bit faster than they did it, though. Did I do? Do I need you? Oh my, do I, honey? Did I do? I'm glad that I'm the one who found you. That's why I'm always hanging around you. And do I love you? Oh my, do I, honey? Do But it never did Barbara Martin Trio. What fun dialogue that was in that song, especially between you and the bass. 
That was impressive and incredible. Uh, oh, thank you. I want, a lot of fun, too. <laughs> fun to listen to and watch and learn from. I want to remind you, Barbara, the first time I heard I'm OK was just a terrible day for me. And I oh. sat in that house and heard you begin to sing it. And I, I wept and realized I was OK. Oh. So thank you for that. And thank you for giving it to me again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what a beautiful thing to say. I mean, thank every word of that. Thank you so much. That just made me my day. <laughs> well, <laughs> good. Well, you know. Thanks to all of you for being here, giving us the music, making us feel good. Thank you, Richmond Jazz Society, BJ Brown, for sending them to us. Thank you, Dominion Energy, for helping us pay us, and to remember Tommy Productions for capturing and for Chris for mixing those sounds. Of course, to you at home, we say thank you for loving with us. Thank you for listening to us, and thank you for learning from us in Richmond, Virginia, at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts from the Leslie Cheek Theater stage. This has been our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. I'm Robert Fennard. Good night. <laughs>